Chapman's Homer, book 23 of the Iliad, the famous Patroclus's games. The argument. Achilles orders jousts of exequies for his Patroclus and doth sacrifice. Twelve Trojan princes must, loved hounds and horse and other offerings to the honored course. He institutes besides a funeral game where Diomed for horse race wins the fame. For foot, Ulysses, others otherwise, strive and obtain and end the exequies. Psy sings the rites of the deceased ordained by great Iacadis. Thus mourned all Troy, but when at fleet and Hellas Pontus's shore, the Greeks arrived each to his ship, only the conqueror kept undispersed his myrmidons and said, loved countrymen, disjoin not we the chariots and horse, but bearing hard our reign, with state of both march soft and close and mourn about the course, tis proper honour to the dead. Then take we out our horse, when with our friends kind woe our hearts have felt delight to do, a virtuous soul right, and then sup. This said, all full of woe, circle the course Achilles led and thrice about him close, all bore their goodly coated course. Amongst all Thetis rose and stirred up a delight in grief till all their arms with tears and all sands were wet. So much they love that lord of fears. Then to the centre fell the prince, and putting in the breast of his slain friend, his slaughtering hands began to all the rest, words to their tears. Rejoice, said he, O oh, my Patroclus, thou courted by Dece now, now I pay to thy late overthrow. All my revenges vowed before, Hector lies slaughtered here, dragged at my chariot, and our dogs shall all in pieces tear his hated limbs. Twelve Trojans, youths, born of their noblest strains, I took alive, and yet enraged will empty all their veins of vital spirits sacrificed before thy heap of fire. This said, a work unworthy him, he put it upon his ire and trampled Hector underfoot at his friend's feet. The rest, disarmed, took horse from chariot and all to sleep addressed. There is black vessel, infinite were those that rested there, himself yet sleeps not, now his spirits are wrought about the cheer, fit for so high a funeral. About the steel used then, oxen in heaps lay bellowing, preparing food for men. Bleating of sheep and goats filled the air. Numbers of white-toothed swine, swimming in fat, lay singeing there. The person of the slain was girt with slaughter. All this done, all the Greek kings conveyed. Achilles to the king of men, his rage not yet allayed for his Patroclus, being arrived at Agamemnon's tent, himself bade heralds put to fire a cauldron, present the service of it to the prince, to try if they could win his pleasure to admit their pains to cleanse the blood soaked in, about his conquering hands and brows. Not by the king of heaven, he swore. The laws of friendship damn this false heart license given to men that lose friends. Not a drop shall touch me till I put Patroclus in the funeral pyre. Before these curls be cut, his tomb erected. Tis the last of all care I shall take, while I consort the careful. Yet for your entreaty's sake, and though I loathe food, I will eat. But early in the morn, three days, use your strict command that loads of wood be borne to our design palace. All that fits to light home such a one as is to pass, the shades of death that fire, enough set gone. His person quickly from our eyes and our diverted men may ply their business. This all ears did freely entertain and found observance. Then they supped with all the things fit and all repaired to tents and rest. The friend, the shore, Maritimal, sought for his bed and found his place. Fair and upon which played the murmuring billows, there his limbs to rest, not to sleep, he laid. Heavily singing. Round about, silent, not too near, stood all his myrmidons, when straight so over-laboured ward its goodly lineaments with chase of Hector, that beyond his resolution not to sleep, sleep cast his sudden bond 
over his sense and loosed his care. Then of his wretched friend the soul appeared, and every part the form did comprehend his likeness, his fair eyes, his voice, his stature, every weed. His person wore it fantasied and stood above his head, this sad speech uttering. Dost thou sleep? Yakides, am I forgotten of thee? Being alive, I found thy memory ever respectful. But now dead, thy dying love abates. Inter me quickly, enter me in Pluto's iron gates, for now the souls, the shades of men, fled from this being beat, my spirit from rest and stay, my much desired seat, amongst souls placed beyond the flood, for every way I err. About this broad doored house of Dees, O oh, help then to prefer thy soul yet further. Here I mourn, but had the funeral fire consumed my body, never more my spirits should retire from hell's low region, from thence the souls never are retrieved to talk with friends here, nor shall I a hateful fate deprive my being here, that at my birth was fixed and such fate even now, O oh, godlike man, at mark. Art marked the deadly ill and gate must entertain thy death. Go oh, then, I charge thee now, take care that our bones part not, but as life combined in equal fare, our loving being so let death. When from Apunta's towers my father brought me to your roofs, since against my will my powers incensed and indiscreet, at dice slew fair Amphidamus, then Peleus entertained me well. And then thy charge I was, by his injunction and thy love, and therein let me still receive protection, both our bones, provide in thy last will that one urn may contain, and make that vessel all of gold that Titus gave thee, that rich ra urn. This said sleep ceased to hold, Achilles' temples, and the shade thus he received. My friend, what needed these commands? My care before meant to commend my bones to thine, and in that urn be sure thy will is done. A little stay yet, let's delight some full passion of woe enough either's effects embrace we. Opening thus his greedy arms, he felt no friend. Like matter vaporous, the spirit vanished under earth and murmured in his stoop. Achilles started. Both his hands he clapped and lifted up in this sort wandering. Oh, ye gods, I see we have a soul. In thunder dwellings and a kind man resembling idle. Soul seat yet, all matter felt, stays with the carcass here. O friend hapless Patroclus, soul did all this night appear, weeping and making moan to me, commanding everything that I intended towards him, so truly figuring. Himself at all parts, as was strange. This accident did turn to much more sorrow and begat a greediness to mourn in all that hard. When morning thus so rosy morn arose, and Agamemnon through the tents walked and waked all, did dispose that both men and mules for carriage and matter for the fire of all which work Meriones, the Cretan sovereign squire, was captain, and abroad they went, wood cutting tools they bore of all hands and well twisted cords and mules marched all before uphill downhill over thwarts breakneck cliffs they passed but when the fountful eaters tops they scaled with utmost haste all fell upon the high haired oaks and down their curled brows fell bustling to the earth and up went all the bowls and boughs bound to the mules and back again they parted the harsh way Amongst them through the tangling shrubs, and long they thought the day, till in the plain field all arrived, for all the woodmen bore, logs on their necks, Mariones would have it so, the shore at last they reached yet, and then down their carriages they cast, and sat upon them, where the son of Peleus had placed the ground for his great sepulture, and for his friends in one. They raised a huge pile, and to arms went every Myrmidon, Charged by Achilles, chariots and horse were harnessed, fighters and charioteers got up, and they the sad march led, a cloud of infinite foot behind. In midst of all was born Patroclus's person by his peers, 
On him were all heads shorn, even till they covered him with curls. Next to him marched his friend, embracing his cold neck, all sad since now he was to send his dearest to his endless home. Arrived all where the wood was heaped for funeral, they set down apart, Achilles stood. When enough wood was heaped on, he cut his golden hair, long kept for Spercius the flood, in hope of safe repair. To Phythia, by that river's power, but now less left hopelessness, thus enraged and looking on the sea, he cried out, Spercius, in vain my father's piety vowed at my implored return to my loved country, and these curls should on thy shores be shorn. Besides a sacred hecatomb, and sacrifice besides a fifty weathers, at those founts where men had edified lofty temple, and perfumed an altar to thy name. There vowed he all these offerings, but fate prevents thy fame. His hopes not suffering, satisfied, and since I never more shall see my loved soil, my friend's hands shall to the Stygian shore convey these tresses. Thus he put in his friend's hands the hair. This bred fresh desire of moan, and in the sad affair the sun had said amongst them all, had Thetis's son not spoke thus to Atrides. King of men, thy aid I still invoke, since thy command all men still here, dismiss thy soldiers now, and let them victual. They have mourned sufficient, tis we owe the dead this honour. And with us let all the captains stay. This heard Atreides instantly the soldiers sent away. The funeral officers remained and heaped on matter still, till of an hundred foot about them made the funeral pile, in whose hot height they cast the course, and then they poured on tears. Numbers of fat sheep, like store of crooked going steers, they slew before the solemn fire, stripped off their hides and dressed of which Achilles took the fat and covered the deceased from head to foot. And round about he made the officers pile the beasts' naked bodies, the vessels full of honey and of oil poured in them, laid upon the bier and cast into the fire. Four godly horse of nine hands, two most in the desire of that great prince, the trencher fed, all fed that hungry flame, Twelve Trojan princes last stood forth, young and of toward fame. All which said on which wicked spirits there struck he, there he slew, and to the iron strengths of fire their noble limbs he threw. Then breathed his last sighs, and these words, Again rejoice, my friend, even in the joyless depth of hell now give I complete end. To all my vows, alone thy life sustained, not violence. Twelve Trojan princes wait on thee and labor to incense thy glorious heap of funeral. Great Hector, I'll excuse. The dogs shall eat him. These high threats perform not their abuse. Jove's daughter Venus took the guard of noble Hector's course and kept the dogs off. Night and day a playing sovereign force of rosy balm that to the dogs were horrible in taste, with which... She the body filled. Renowned Apollo cast a cloud from heaven, lest with the sun the nerves and lineaments might dry and putrefy. And now some powers denied consents to this solemnity. The fire, for all the oily fuel it had injected, would not burn. And then the loving, cruel study for help, standing off, invoked two fair winds, Zephyr and Boreas to afford the rage of both their kinds, to aid this outrage. Precious gifts, his earnest zeal did vow, poured from a golden bowl much wine and prayed them both to blow, that quickly his friend's course might burn, and that heap's sturdy breast embrace consumption. Iris heard the winds were at a feast, all in the courts of Zephyrus, that boisterous blowing air gathered together, she that wears the thousand-coloured hair flew thither, standing in the porch. They, seeing her, all arose, called to her. Every one desired she would a while repose and eat there with them. She answered, no, no place of seat is here. Retreat calls to the ocean and Ethiopia, where a hecatomb is offering now to heaven. And there must I partake the feast of sacrifice. I come to signify 
that Titus' son implores your aids, princes of north and west, and vows of much fair sacrifice of each will set his breast against this heap of funeral, and make it quickly burn. Patroclus lies there, whose decease all the Achaeans mourn. This said and parted and outrushed with an unmeasured roar, those two winds, tumbling clouds and heaps, ushers to either blore, and instantly they reached the sea, up flew the waves, the gale was strong, reached fruitful Troy, and full upon the fire they fall. The huge heap thundered. All night long from his choked breast they blew a liberal flame up. And all night swift foot Achilles threw wine from a golden bowl on earth and steeped the soil in wine, still calling on Patroclus's soul. No father could incline more to a son most dear, nor more mourn at his burned bones than did the great prince to his friend at his combustions. Still creeping near and near the heap, still sighing, weeping still, but when the day star looked abroad and promised from high hill light, which the saffron morn made good and sprinkled on the seas, then languished the great pile, then sunk the flames, and then calm peace, turned back the rough winds to their homes, the Thracian billow rings, their high retreat ruffled with cuffs of their triumphant wings. The bleeders forsook the pile and took his tired limb, Choose place of rest where laid sweet sleep fell to his wish on him. And all the king's guard, waiting then, perceiving will to rise in that great session, hurried in, and oped again his eyes with tumult of their troop and haste. A little then he reared his troubled person sitting up, and this affair referred to wished commandment of the kings. The Trides and the rest of our commander's general vouchsafe me this request before your parting, given charge the quenching with black wine of his heap relics, every brand the yellow fire made shine, and then let search Patroclus's bones, distinguishing them well. As well ye may, they kept the midst. The rest at random fell, about the extreme part of the pile, men's bones and horses mixed. Being found, I'll find an urn of gold to enclose them, and betwixt the air and them two kells of fat lay on them, and to rest, commit them till mine own bones seal our love, my soul deceased. The sepulture I have not charged to make of too much state, but of a model, something mean, that you of hunger, younger fate. When I am gone, they amplify with such a breath and height as fits your judgment and our worths. This charge received his weight in all observance. First they quenched with sable wine the heat, as far as it had fed the flame, the ash fell wondrous deep in which his consorts, that his life religiously loved, searched weeping for his bones, which found they conscionably proved his will made to Yakides, and with his love did add. A golden vessel double fat contained them, all which clad in veils of linen pure and rich was solemnly conveyed to Kitty's tent. Platform then about pile they laid of his fit sepulture and raised a heap of earth and then offered departure. But the prince retained there still his men, employing them to fetch from fleet rich tripods for his games, cauldrons, horse, mules, broad-headed beeves, bright steel and brighter dames. The best at horse race, he ordained a lady for his prize, generally praiseful, fair and young and skillful in housewife fries. All kinds fitting and with a all a trivet that enclosed twenty-two measures room with ears. The next prize he proposed was that which, when had high respect, a mare of six years old, unhandled, horsed with a mule, and ready to have foaled. The third game was a cauldron, new, fair, bright, and could for size contain two measures. The fourth, two talents quantities of finest gold, the fifth game was a great new standing bowl to set down both ways. These brought in, Achilles then stood up and said, Atreides and my lords, chief horsemen of our host, these games expect ye if myself should interpose my most for our horse race. I make no doubt that I should take again these gifts proposed. Ye all know well of how divine a strain my horse are and how imminent. 
of Neptune's gift they are to Peleus, and of his to me. Myself and I will not share in gifts and given others, nor my steeds breathe any spirit to shake their airy pastures, so they mourn for their kind guider's sake, late lost, that used with humorous oil to slick their lofty manes, clear water having cleansed them first, and his bane being their banes. Those lofty manes now strew the earth, their heads held shaken down. You then that trust in chariots and hope with horse to crown your conquering temples, gird yourselves, now fame and prize stretched for all that have spirits. This fired all. The first competitor was King Eumelus, whom the art of horsemanship did grace, son to Admetus. Next to him rose Diomed to the race. That under reigns ruled Trojan horse of late forced from the son of Lord Anchises, himself freed of near confusion by Phoebus. Next to him set forth the yellow-headed king of Lacedaemon, Jove's high seed, and in his managing Podargus and swift Ether trod steeds to the king of men. Ether given by Echibalus, the Anchiseidon as bribed to free him from the war resolved for Ilion. So delicacy feasted him whom Jove bestowed upon a mighty wealth. Dwelling was in broad Sicyone, old Nestor's son, Antilochus, was forth for chivalry. In this contention his fair horse, whereof of the Pillion breed, and his old father coming near informed him for good speed, with good race notes, in which himself could good instruction give. Antilochus, thou young thou art, let thy grave virtues live, beloved of Neptune and of Jove, their spirits have taught thee all. The art of horsemanship for which less thy merits fall, in need of doctrine. While thy skills can wield a chariot in all fit turnings, yet thy horse, their slow feet handle not, as fits thy manage, so makes me cast doubts of thy success. I well know all these are not seen in art of this address, more than thyself, their horses yet superior are to thine, for their parts thine want speed, to make discharge of a design, to please an artist, but go on, show but thy art and heart, at all points and set them against their horses' heart and art. Good judges will not see thee loose, a carpenter's desert, stands more in cunning than in power. And a pilot doth avert his vessel from the rock and rack tossed with the churlish winds by skill, not strength. So sorts it here. One charioteer that finds want of another's power in horse must in his own skill set an overplus of that to that. And so the proof will get skill that still rests within a man more grace than power without. He that in horse and chariot trust is often hurled about this way and that unhandsomely all hell and heaven wide of his end he better skilled that rules war, war horse worse horse will be all observant bend right on the scope still of a race bear near now no ever when to reign when give rain as his foe before well noted in his vein manage and his steeds estate present occasion I'll give the instance now. As plain as if thou sawst it done, here stands a dry stub of some tree, a cubit from the ground. Suppose the stub of oak or larch, for either are so sound that neither rots with wet, two stones, white, mark you, white for view, parted on either side the stub, and these lay where they drew. The way into a strait, the race betwixt both lying clear. Imagine them some monument of one long since tombed there, or that they had by been lists of race for men for former years, as now the lists of Achilles sets may serve for charioteers many years hence. When near to these gr race grows, then as right drive on them as thy eye can judge, then lay thy bridle's weight. Most of thy left side, Thy right horse, then switching, all thy throat spent in encouragements, give them, and all the rain let float about his shoulders. Thy near horse will be yet he that gave thy prize, the skill the prize, and him rein so his head may touch the knave of thy left wheel. But then take care thou runst not on the stone, 
with rack of horse and chariot which so thou bearest upon shipwrack within the heaven hold by all means that will breed others delight and be ashamed be wise then and take heed my loved son get but be first at turning in the course he lives not that can cope thee then not if he backed the horse the god's bread and address ode divine arian speed could not add pace thee or horse Lamadon did breed whose race is inf is famous and fed here thus sat at Neleides. and when all that could be said was said and then Mariones set fifthly forth his fair-maned horse all leapt to chariot and every man then for the start cast in his proper lot Achilles drew, and Antilochus, the lot set foremost fourth, Eumelus next, and three days third, Marianas the fourth. The fifth and last was Diomed, far first in excellence. All stood in order, and the lists Achilles fixed far thence, in plain field, and a seat ordained fast by, in which he set. Renowned Phoenix, in the grace of Peleus, was so great, to see the race and give a truth of all their passages. All start together, scourged and cried, and gave their business, study, and order. Through the field they held a winged pace. Beneath the bosom of their steeds, a dust so dimmed the race. It stood above their heads in clouds, or like to storms amazed. Manes flew like ensigns in the wind. The chariots sometimes grazed and sometimes jumped up to the air. Yet still sat fast the men. Their spirits even panting in their breasts with fervor to obtain. But when they turned to fleet again, then all men's skills were tried. Then stretched the pastons of their steeds, Eumelus's horse and pride, still bore the sovereign. After them came Diomed's courses, close, still apt to leap their chariot, and ready to repose upon the shoulders of their king, their heads. His black even burned with fire that from their nostrils flew, and then their lord had turned the race for him, or given it doubt if Phoebus had not smit the scourge out of his hands and tears of helpless wrath with it from forth his eyes to see his horse for want of scourge made slow and to the others by Apollo's help with much more swiftness go Apollo's spike Pallas discerned and flew to Tydeus's son his scourge reached and his horse made fresh then tuck her angry run at King Eumelus break his gears his mares on both sides flew his drought tree fell to earth, and him to tossed up chariot through, down to the earth. His elbows torn, his forehead all his face, struck at the centre, his speech lost, and then the turned race fell to Titides. Before all his conquering horse he drave, his first he glittered in the race, divine Athenia gave. Strength to his horse and fame to him. Next, him, grave Sparta's king, Antilochus, his father's horse then urged with all his sting of scourge and voice. Run low, said he, stretch out your limbs and fly. With Diomed's horse I bid not strive, nor with himself strive I. Athenia wings his horse, and him renowns a treat as his steeds. Are they he must not fail, but reach, and soon, lest soon, succeeds. The blot of all your fames to yield in swiftness to a mare, to female ether. What's the cause, ye best that ever were, that thus ye fail us? Be assured that Nestor's love ye lose. For ever if he shall fail his son, through both your both sides goes. His hot steel, if ye suffer me to bring this last prize home, haste, overcome them instantly. We needs must overcome. This harsh way next us, this my mind will take, this I despise, for peril this I'll creep through. Hard the way to honor lies. And take that take I, and that shall yield. His horse by all this knew. He was not pleased and feared his voice, and for a while they flew. But straight more clear appeared the straight Antilochus foresaw. It was a gasp the earth gave, forced by humorous, humorous cold and raw. Poured out of winter's watery breast, met there and cleaving deep. All that near passage to the list. This Nestor's son would keep, and left the roadway being about Atreus' fear and cried, Antilochus, thy horse is mad, contain thy horse, we ride. 
a way most dangerous. Turn head, but time take larger field. We shall be splitted. Nestor's son, with so much more scourge impelled, his horse for this, as if not heard, and got as far before as any youth can cast. A quote. A treatise would no more. He back again, for fear himself, his goodly chariot, and horse together showed strew the dust in being so dusty hot of thirsted conquest. But he cheered at parting, passing sore. Antilochus, said he, a worse than thee earth never bore. Farewell, we never thought thee wise that were wise, but not so. Without oaths shall the wreath be sure crown thy mad temples. Go. Yet he bethought him, and went too, thus stirring up his steeds. Leave me not last thus, nor stand vexed. Let these fail in their speeds of feet and knees, not you. Shall these, these old jades, pass the flower of youth that you have passed you? This the horse feared, and more power put to their knees. Straight getting ground, both flew, and so the rest. All came in smokes like spirits. The Greeks, set to see who did best without the race aloft, now made a new discovery. Other than that they made at first, it Amenius' eye distinguished all, he knew the voice of Diomed, seeing a horse of special mark, Huller Bay, and was the first in course. He forehead putting forth a star, round like the moon and white. Up stood the Cretan uttering this. Is it alone my sight? Princes and captains that discerns another lead the race with other horse than led of late. Eumelus made most pace with his fleet mares, and he began the fexer as we thought. Now all the field I search and find nowhere his view. Hath naught befallen amiss to him? Perhaps he hath not with success performed this flexure. His reins lost, or seat, or with a tress. His chariot failed him, and his mares have outrayed with a fright. Stand up, try, you for your eyes, for mine hold. With the second sight, this seems to me the Aetolian king, the Tidian Diomed. To you it seems so, rustically, Ajax, alias, said. Your words are suited to your eyes. These mares lead still that led. Eumelus owes them, and he still holds reins in that place that did not fall in as you hoped. You must pray before us all, though last in judgment of all. You're too old. Your tongue goes still too fast, and must not talk so. Here are those that better thee, and look for first place in this censure. This Idomeneus took in much disdain, and thus replied, Thou best in speech is worst, barbarous language. Others here might have reproved me first, not thou, unfitst of all. I build a tripod with thee here, or cauldron, and our general maker equal arbiter. Those horse are first. That when they pace thou then mayst know. This third, Iliadis, more, and more than words this quarrel had inspired, had not Achilles rose and used this pacifying speech. No more. Away with words in war, it touched both with breach of that which fits ye. Your deserts should others reprehend that give such Foul terms, sit ye still, the men themselves will end, the strife betwixt you instantly, and either's own load bear on his own shoulders. Then to both the first horse will appear, and which is second. These words, used to Tides, was at hand. His horse ran high, glanced on the way, and up they tossed the sand, thick on their coachman, on their pace, their chariot decked with gold, swiftly attended, no wheel seen, nor wheels print in the mould, impressed behind them, these horse flew a flight, not ran a race. Arrived amidst the lists they stood, sweat trickling down apace, their high manes and their prominent breasts, and down jumped the Amed, laid up his scourge aloft the seat, and straight his prize was led. Home to his tent. Rough Stenelus laid quick hand on the dame, and handled Trivet, sent both home by his men. Next came Antilochus, that one with wiles, not swiftness of his horse, precedence of the gold-locked king, who yet maintained the course so close that not the king's own horse got more before the wheel of his rich chariot that might still 
the execution feel. But the extreme hairs of his tail and that sufficient clothes held to his leader no great space it let him interpose, considered in so great a field that Nestor's wily son, gat of the king, now at his heels, though at the breach he won. A quartz cast of him, which the king again at the instant gained, Ether, Agamemnides, that was so richly manned, gat strength still as she spent which words her worth had proved with deeds, had more the ground been allowed the race and coated for far his steeds. No question leaving for the prize. And now Mariones, a dart's cast, came behind the king, his horse of speed much less, himself less skilled to importune them and give a chariot wing. Admetus' son was last, whose plight Achilles pitying thus spake. This man comes last. Yet right must see his prize, not least. The second his deserts must bear, and Dia made the best. He said, and all aloud, and sure the mare had been his own, had not Antilochus stood forth, and in his answer shown the good reason for his interest. Achilles, he replied, I should be angry with you much to see this ratified. Ought you to take from me my right because his horse had wrong, himself being good? He should have used, as good men do, his tongue in prayer to their power, but bless good, not trusting to his own, but to have been in his good last, his chariot overthrown, or through not me, who's last, who's first. Men's goodness without these is not our question. If his good you pity yet, and please, princely, to grace it, your tents hold a goodly deal of gold. The brass, horse, sheep, women, out of these your bounty may be bold to take a much more worthy prize than my poor merit seeks and give it here before my face and all these that the Greeks may glorify your liberal hands. This prize I will not yield. Who bears this? Whatsoever man, he bears a triad field. His hand and mine must change some blows. Achilles laughed and said, if thou will be Antilochus, I'll see you, Amalus, paid out of my tents. I'll give him the arms which laid I conquered in. I still appears, forged of brass, and waved about with tin. Twill be a present worthy him. This said Automedon. He sent for them. He went and brought, and to Admetus' son Achilles gave them. He, well pleased, received them. Then arose, wronged Menelaus, much incensed with young Antilochus. He begged to speak. A herald took his scepter and gave charge of silence to the other Greeks. Then did the king enlarge the spleen he prisoned, uttering this. Antilochus till now, we grant thee wise. But in this act, what wisdom utterest thou? Thou hast disgraced my virtue, wronged my horse, preferring thine, much their inferiors. But go to princes, nor his, nor mine. Judge of with favour him nor me, lest any Grecian use this scandal. Menelaus won, with Nestor's son's abuse, the prize in question. His horse be worst, himself yet won the best, but power and greatness. Yet because I would not thus contest to make parts taking, I'll be judge. And I suppose none here will blame my judgment. I'll do right. Antilochus, come near. Come, noble gentleman, tis your place. Swear by the earth's circling God. Stand before your chariot and horse and all that self-rod with which you scourge them in your hand, if both will, with will and while. You did not cross my chariot. He thus did reconcile grace with his disgrace and with wit restored him to his wit. Now crave I patience, O king. Whatever was unfit, ascribe to much more youth in me than you. You more in age and more in excellence know well the outrage that engage. All young men's actions, sharper wits, but duller wisdoms. Still from us flow, then from you, for which curb with your wisdom will. The prize I thought mine, I yield yours. And if you please a prize of greater value to my tent, I'll send for and suffice. Your will at full and instantly. For in this point of time, I rather wish to be enjoined your favours top to climb than to be falling all my time from height of such a grace. O oh, Jove loved king, and all the gods receive a curse in place. 
This said he fetched his prize to him, and it rejoiced him so, that as corn ears shine with the dew, yet having time to grow, when fields set all their bristles up, in such a rough thou art. What thou? What men allow us answering thus, Antilochus, I know. And I now, though I were angry, yield to thee, because I see that thou hast wit. And I thought not. Thy youth had got the mastery of thy spirit, and yet for all this tis more safe not to abuse at all great men than venturing trust to wit to take up what may fall. For no man in our host beside had easily calmed my spleen, stirred with like tempest. But thyself hast sustainer been of much affliction in my cause, so good father too, and so thy brother at thy suit, I therefore let all go, I give thee the game here. Though mine own, that all these may discern, King Menelaus bears a mind at no part proud or stern. The king thus calmed, Antilochus received, and gave the steed to no loved no man to lead thence, and then received beside the cauldron. Next, Mariones, the fourth game, was to have two talents gold. The fifth on one, renowned Achilles gave to Reverend Nestor, giving a bowl to set on either end, which through the press he carried them received, said he, old friend, the gift as funeral monument of my dear friend deceased, whom never must you meet see again. I make it his bequest to you as without any strife obtaining it from all. Your shoulders must not undergo the churlish world bats fall. Rustling is past you, strife and darts, the foot's celerity. Harsh age in his years fetters you, and honor sets you free. Thus gave he it, and took and joyed, but ere he thanked he said, Now sure, my honorable son, in all points thou hast played the comely orator. No more must I contend with nerves. Feet fail, and hands. Arms want that strength, that this and that swing serves under your shoulders. What to heaven I was so young, chinned now, and strength through such a many bones to celebrate this show, as when the Epians brought to fire, actively honoring thus, King Amarynchia's funerals and fair Buprasius. His son's put prizes down for him, while not a man matched me. Of all the Epians are the sons of great-souled Etioli. No, nor Pelians themselves, my countrymen. I beat great Clitomideus, Enops' son, at buffets, at the feet of wrestling. I laid under me one that gainst me rose, Ancius called Plunera, Plur, Pluronius. I made Iphiclus close. The foot came to me at the spear I conquered Polydor and strong Phileus. Actors, sons of all men, only bore the palm at horse race, conquering with lashing on more horse, and envying my victory, because before their course all the best games were gone with me. These men were twins. One was a most sure guide, a most sure guide. But the other gave the pass with rod and metal. This was then. But now young men must wage these works, and my joints undergo the sad defects of age. But then I was another man. At that time I excelled amongst the heroes. But forth now, let the other rites be held for thy deceased friend. This thy gift in all kind part I take, and much it joys my heart. But still, for my true kindness' sake, you give me memory. You perceive in what fit grace I stand amongst the Grecians, and to theirs you set your graceful hand. The gods give ample recompense of grace again to thee for this and all your favors thus back through the thrust drave he when he had stayed out all the praise of old Neliades, and now for buffets that rough game he ordered passages proposing a laborious mule of six years old untamed and fierce in handling brought and bound in that place where they gained and to the conquered around cup both which he thus proclaims, a treatise in all friends of Greece, two men for these two games. I bid stand forth, who best can strike with high contracted fists, Apollo giving him the wreath, now all about these lists. Upon win a mule, a patient of toil, the vanquished this round cup, 
This uttered Panopeus' son, Ippias, straight stood up. Tall, huge man, that to the nail knew the red sport of hand, and seizing the tough mule thus spake, now let some other stand. Forth for the cup, this mule is mine, at cuffs I boast me best. It's not enough, I am no soldier, who is worthiest? Are all works, none, if not possible. At this yet this I say, and will perform this. Who stands forth? I'll burst him. I will bray his bones as in a mortar. Fetch surgeons in air to take his course from under me. His speech did all men silent make. At last stood forth Eurialis, a man godlike and son to King Mechistius, grandchild of honoured Talion. He was so strong that coming once to Thebes, when Oedipus had, like right, solemnized for him, he went victorious from all the Thebans. This rare man, Titides, would prepare, put on his girdle, oxide cords, fair wrought, and spent much care that he might conquer, heartened him, and taught him tricks, both dressed, fit for the affair, both fought, were broad, then breasts opposed to breast. Fists against fists arose. And they joined. Rattling of jaws was there, gnashing of teeth, and heavy blows dashed blood out everywhere. At length Epius spied clear way, rushed in, and such a blow drave underneath the other's ear that his neat limbs did strow the knocked earth, no more legs had he. But as a huge fish laid near the cold weed gathering shore, is with a north floor frayed, shoots back, and in the black deep hide so sent against the ground was foiled Euryalus, his strength so bid in more profound deeps of Epius, who took up the entranced competitor, about whom rushed a crowd of friends that through the clusters bore his faltering knees, he spitting up, up thick clods of blood, his head tottered of one side, his sense gone, when to a by-place led. Thither they brought him the round cup, Pelides then set forth prize for a wrestling to the best trivet that was worth twelve oxen, great and fit for fire. The conquered was to obtain a woman, excellent in works, a beauty and a gain, prized at four oxen. Up he stood, and thus proclaimed, Arise, you wrestlers, that will prove for these. Outstep the ample size of mighty Ajax, huge in strength to him layered as a son, the crafty one, as huge one in slight. Their ceremony done of making ready, forth they stepped, catch elbows with strong hands. And as the beams of some high house crack with a storm, yet stands the house being built well. The well-skilled men so cracked their backbones, wrenched with horrid twitches in their sides, arms, shoulders, all bepinched, ran thick the whales, red with the blood, ready to start out. Both longed for the conquest and the prize, yet showed no play, being loath to lose both. Nor could Ithaca stir Ajax, nor could he hail down Ulysses, being more strong than with mere strength to be, hurled from all vantage of his slight. Tired then with tugging play, great Ajax Telamonius said, Thou wisest man, or lay my face up, or let me lay thine. Let Jove take care for these. This said, he hoised him up the air, and Laetiades, his wiles forgot not, Ajax's tie, struck behind flat he on his back fell on his breast Ulysses wandered at was this for all all stood amazed then the much suffering man divine Ulysses at next close to Timoleon Telemonian a little raised from earth uh, not quite but with his knees implied locked legs and down fell both on earth close by each other's side both filled with dust Starting up the third close they had made, had not Achilles self stood up, restraining them both and bade. No more tug one another thus, nor moil yourselves. Receive prize equal. Conquest crowns you both. The lists to others leave. They heard and yielded, willingly brushed off the dust and on put other vests. Pelides then, to those that swiftest ran, proposed another prize, a bowl beyond comparison, both for the size and workmanship past all the bowls of earth. It held six measures, silver, all, but had his special worth for workmanship, receiving form from those ingenious men of Sidon. 
the Phoenicians made choice and brought it then along the green sea, giving it to Thoas by degrees. It came to Aeneas, Jason's son, who young Priamides, Lycaon of Achilles' friend, brought with it. And this here Achilles made best game for him that best his feet could bear. For second, he proposed an ox, a huge one, and a fat, and a half of golden talent for last. These thus he set them at. Rise, you that will essay for these. Fourth stepped Oleades, Ulysses answered, and the third was one esteemed past these for footmanship, Antilochus. All ranked Achilles showed the race scope. From the start they glid. Oleades bestowed his feet the swiftest. Close to him flew godlike Ithacus, and as a lady at her loom, being young and beauteous, her silk shuttle close to her breast, with the grace that doth inflame, and her white hand lifts quick and oft, in drawing from her fame her gentle thread, which she unwinds with ever at her breast, gracing her fair hand so close still, and with such interest in all men's likings, Ithacus unwound and spent the race by him before, took out his steps with putting in their place, promptly and gracefully on his own, spread the dust before, and clouded with his breath his head. So facile he bore, his royal person, that he struck shouts from the Greeks with thirst, that he should conquer though he flew, yet come, come, O oh, come first, ever they cried to him. And this even his wise breast did move, to more desire of victory, it made him pray and prove, Minerva's aid, his fortress still, O oh, goddess here, said he, and to my feet, stoop with thy help, now happy fortress be. He was, and light made all his limbs. And now both near their crown, and ever tripped up Ajax's heels, and headlong he fell down, amidst the order of the breast and beasts. There negligently he fell, since they were slain there. By this Minerva's friend bereft, Oleades of that rich bull, and left his lips, nose, and eyes ruthfully smeared. The fat ox yet he seized for second prize. Held by the horn, spit at the tail. And thus spake he all besmeared. Ah, villainous chance, this Ithaca so highly is endeared to his Minerva that her hand is ever in his deeds. She, like his mother, nestles him. For from her it proceeds, I know that I am used thus. This all in light laughter cast, amongst whom quick Antilochus laughed out his coming last, thus wittily. Know all my friends that all times past and now, the gods must honour most live men. Eliades ye know more old than I, but Ithacus is of the foremost race, first generation of men, give the old man his grace. They count him of the green-haired eld, they may or in his flower, for not yet our greatest flourisher can equal him in power. Of foot strife, but the Achilles. Thus soothed he, Thetis' son, who thus accepted, well, youth, your praises shall not run with unrewarded feet on mine. Your half a talent's prize. I'll make a whole one. Take you, sir. He took and joyed, then flies. Another game for Thetis' son set in the lists a lance, a shield and helmet being the arm sharp at and did advance. Against Patroclus he prized. And thus he named the dress. Stand forth to most excellent armed, and before all these give mutual onset to the touch and wound of either's flesh. Who first shall wound through other's arms his blood appearing fresh, shall win this sword, silvered and hatched, the blade is right of thrace, a stir pierce yielded, those arms shall part their grace. With either's valour and the men I'll liberally feast at my pavilion. To this game the first man that addressed was Ajax Telemonius, to him King Diomed. Both in opposed parts of the press, full arm both entered. The lists amidst the multitude, put lux on so austere, and joined so roughly that amaze surprised the Greeks in fear of either mischief. Thrice they flew at fierce darts, closed thrice. Then Ajax struck through Diomed's shield, but did no prejudice, his curates saft him, Diomed's dart still over the shoulders flew, still mounting with the spirit it bore, 
And now the fire axe grew so violent that the Greeks cried, hold no more. Let them no more give equal prize to either. Yet the sword proposed before, for him did best Achilles gave to Diomed, then a stone in fashion of a sphere he showed of no invention. But natural only melted through with iron. It was the bowl that King Etion used to hurl, but he bereft. Sold by great Achilles to the fleet with store of other prize, he brought it and proposed it now before the exercise. And prize itself, he stood and said, Rise, you that will approve your arm strengths now in this brave strife, his vigor that can move. This furthest needs no gain but this, for reached he ne'er so far, with large fields of his own in Greece, and so needs for his car. He plowed through other tools of thrift, of much iron, I'll able this. For five revolved years, no need shall use his messages to any town to furnish him. His only bowl shall yield iron enough for all affairs. This said to try this field. First, Polypetes issued. Next, Leontius the third, great Ajax, huge Apeus forth, yet he was first that stirred that mine of iron. Up it went, and up he tossed it so. That laughter took up all the field. Next, man did, did, did. Throw was Leontius, Ajax third, who gave it such a hand, that far past both their marks it flew, but now it was to be manned by Pelopetes, and as far as an ox that strays as a herdman can swing out his goal, so far did he outraise the stone past all men, all the field rose in a shout to seat. About him flocked his friends and bore the royal game to fleet. For archery he then set forth ten axes edged two ways, and ten of one edge. On the shore far off he caused to raise the shipmast, to whose top they tied a fearful dove by the foot, at which all shot the game put thus. He that the dove could shoot, nor the string that fastened her, or the two-edged tools should bear all to the fleet. Who touched the string and missed the dove should share the one-edged axes. This proposed the king, King Choicer. Force arose, and with him rose Mariones, and now the lots must dispose their shooting first, both which let fall into a helm of brass. First Choicer came, and first he shot, and his cross fortune was to shoot the string, the dove untouched, Apollo did envy his skill, since not to him he vowed being god of archery, a first fallen limb. The bitter shaft yet cut into the cord that down fell on the dove aloft up to the welkin sword. The Greeks gave shouts. Mariones made a hearty vow to sacrifice a first fallen lamb to him that rules the bow. And then to fell his fame, his shaft being ready not before. He spied her in the clouds that here and there and everywhere did soar. Yet at her height he reached her side, struck her quite through. And down the shaft fell at his feet, the dove, the mast, again did crown. There hung the dead, and all the plumes were ruffled, she stark dead. And there far all from him she fell, the people wondered, and stood astonished, the archer pleased. Yakides then shows a long lance in a cauldron, new, engrailed with twenty hues, prized at an ox. These games were showed for men at darts, and then uprose the general of all, uprose the king of men, uprose the late crown Meriones. Achilles, seeing the king, do him his grace, prevents more deed, his royal offering, thus interrupting. King of men, who will conceive how far thy worth superior is to all, how much most singular thy powers is, and thy skill in darts, accepting then this poor prize without contention, and your will pleased with what I advise. Afford Marianas the lance. The king was nothing slow to that fit grace. Achilles then the brass lance did bestow on good Meroninus. The king his present would not save, but to renowned Tathibius the goodly cauldron gave. 